So, you finally got bored of that bleak, desolate forest that is your home in Reign of Giants, and decided to buy the very underpriced second DLC for this amazing game, Shipwrecked. There's just one problem. You can't seem to stay alive. Well, my friend, you are in luck because today marks the start of my comprehensive How to Survive Shipwrecked series. This will be very similar to my How to Survive Reign of Giants series, except for the obvious fact that it is, well, shipwrecked. Now, unlike Reign of Giants, Shipwrecked only has one default spawning season, Mild, so you won't have to change any settings to influence RNG in this one. I, however, did change Sealnado to more. That's just because I wanted to fight Sealnado in this run because there was a criminal lack of boss battles in the Reign of Giants series. Also, another thing that I'm going to have to note before we start this tutorial is that this particular segment is going to be far less day by day as compared to my Reign of Giants segment. This is because Shipwrecked has tasks that will carry through multiple days, particularly exploring. It's a lot harder to explore this archipelago of islands, so naturally some stretches of time will be dedicated to it. The days are more so following my personal journey through Shipwrecked while stopping every now and then to provide detailed instructions. If you are a few days before or ahead of me, don't panic. As long as you end the first season as advanced or more advanced than me, you'll be totally fine. With all that done, and with Wilson as our character, Let's load into this thalassophobia inducing DLC and load up the first edition of this comprehensive How to Survive Shipwreck series, where I will teach you how to survive and thrive in mild season. Now I'll be totally honest, mild season is, well, completely mild, meaning that there's not a very long list of effects. We will however still go over the basics of this paradise of a season. There is a lot of usable light. Days are incredibly long, dusk is moderate, and night is insanely short. Night-related sanity should not be an issue during this season, and a single torch can easily carry you through the short nights. There is usually only one rainstorm per mild season. In my experience, this storm tends to come pretty late through the season, close to the end. This rainstorm will introduce a new mechanic that we will go over in detail during hurricane season, wind. Trawling produces less valuable drops. This is probably the only downside to the season, but let's be real. The only reason you will ever want to use a trawl net in this DLC is to summon a particular boss, so that really doesn't matter much. Crocodogs, which are the shipwrecked version of hounds, can and will spawn. However, as if the season needed to be any more peaceful, none of the special variants will ever spawn during this season. The waves are semi-frequent. There will be more waves than monsoon season and dry season, but far less than hurricane season. This is actually helpful as waves can provide a very powerful speed boost while sailing. And finally, temperatures are perfectly neutral. No overheating or freezing risks at all. Yeah, that's it for the gameplay effects. Like I said, this season is an absolute paradise with virtually no downsides at all unless you are a fan of trawling for some reason. So with that, let's go over the cosmetic effects of Mild Season. These have little to no effect on the gameplay. The screen will have a saturated, almost cheery tint to it. Seagulls and cormorants can be found while sailing the ocean. With that said, let's splash into your first day. The gameplay flow for this DLC is very similar to Reign of Giants. You want to spend your first day gathering items such as twigs, those sweet and nutritious butterfly wings, rocks, grass, and of course the almighty flint. You may notice some seashells lying in the sand too. Grab those. Not only do they refill some sanity, they also come in handy for creating a necessary item later on. Besides butterfly wings, you may find some more food sources than you're used to. Limpets, which grow in abundance in the tropical region of Shipwreck, can be treated as the meaty version of berries. Speaking of which, those also spawn here. Food is not something that's going to be very scarce in this DLC. Once you get two pieces of flint, 
create a pickaxe and break down some rocks. Avoid the jagged looking rocks as they only provide stones. And we are going for extra flint here. If you absolutely have to, you can break down limpet rocks for some flint. However, only do this in an emergency since limpets will not respawn if you do. Now it's time to get wood. You may think about cutting down those thick and giant jungle trees, but you are a lot better cutting down mature palm trees. Sure, these trees can bite back with falling coconuts, but the palm leaves and the coconuts that drop from this tree are invaluable, and you will want to hold on to them as long as possible. Spend tonight gathering as many resources as you can. Remember to stay mobile using a torch. One torch should last you the entire night easily. Today, it's time to start gathering some resources. Create a machete. This new tool will allow you to collect bamboo and vines, the former being incredibly useful, but we will need both of them to get off this island. You may notice after collecting all of this, your inventory is very quickly getting full. With no gold, we cannot quickly make a science machine and create a backpack. So what do we do? Well, because you gathered those palm leaves, you can whip up a palm pack a small capacity backpack that will hold you over until you can get some gold. Something that I actually forgot to do was make a hammer to break the broken ship and crates on this island. You should do this because it will give you very useful items such as boards, rope, and a boat repair kit. After you do that, create a raft with four bamboo and three vines. And let's get into the ocean to learn about these new sailing mechanics. Now, sailing is a dangerous but necessary mode of transportation in the shipwreck to DLC. As soon as you get far enough from the island you spawned on, you will notice the water gets darker and the waves start to spawn. These waves are actually incredibly useful if you use them right, and dangerous if you use them wrong. If you hit the wave with your raft from behind, you will get a very handy speed boost. However, hit the wave from the front or sides and you will damage your raft and become soaked. Speaking of that, you may notice a new meter in the bottom right of your screen. This is the health of your boat. Ensure that this never, ever hits zero. If your raft breaks with you on it, even if it's in shallow water, if you do not have a life jacket on, you will die. None of the Don't Starve characters know how to swim, it seems. Eventually, while you're out sailing, the water will start to become lighter. This is a sign of a nearby island. Make your way to it and check it out. Unfortunately, this is going to be what you do until you find some gold. Make use of any interesting items you find alongside your journey. And remember to never go into the ocean at night. You cannot hold a torch in your hand while moving, which can turn your situation deadly very quick. Also, if you come across a message in a bottle, be sure to read it. It unveils treasures that you can dig up, and as a bonus, it will locate nearby islands for you. Now I know what you may be thinking. Wow, day five already? Well, yes. Unfortunately, I had no luck finding a good amount of gold until now. If you got any of those buried treasures, then digging them up is a very good idea, as they will unveil a chest full of random goodies. Treasure is almost always a good thing. The worst that can happen is a few snakes spawn and you get some free boards from the chest if you hammer it down. Once you have enough gold, it's time to get to sciencing with a science machine. Using the science machine, go ahead and create an alchemy engine, but do not place it down quite yet, and make yourself the fabled backpack. This will replace your leaf pack as your main item transportation solution for the foreseeable future. Now, spend some time searching for a good home site. Everyone has different preferences as to what they want to call home in Shipwrecked, and honestly, any island can work as a decent home base. Whenever you decide to settle, however, make sure you craft floors for the coastline if it's sandy, as the tides can creep up and flood important items, including your light sources. Something you definitely do not want. You also may come across a suspicious looking fishbone during your exploration. I unfortunately did not come across this at all during this run. But this will summon the shipwrecked equivalent of our favorite mobile chest, Chester, a pelican named Packham Baggins. Now Packham is actually not as good as Chester because his two special variants, Fat and Fire, are not anywhere close to being as good as Ice Chester. So if you find him, great. 
If not, don't worry. You will have a decent time here anyway. I unfortunately could not find a decent home base that fast, causing me to spend a few days out at sea. If you ever get stuck in darkness out at sea with no light source, sometimes these patches of bioluminescence will come in clutch and allow you to survive that pesky Charlie. You may get a crocodog attack today. These guys are hounds, but all terrain, essentially, and can be kited with some ease. Just be sure to never fight them out in the ocean until you get yourself a faster boat. They can swim and will quickly sink your poor little raft. The best way to fight them for now is on land. Using a 1-2 kiting pattern and baiting out their hits, with a little technique you can come out unscathed. I believe in you. Another huge time skip, but again, I was far less lucky in this run compared to my Reign of Giants run. You have hopefully found your base spot by now. My preferred base spot is near these Krizzers, since they are basically a great free light source early game. Just be careful as they can catch items on fire. An extra bonus points if you have a good source of meat nearby. My meat of choice was tall birds, although don't worry about seeking these guys out too hard, because even monster meat will work. So just move some spiders in the other side of your island when you get the chance. Why? Well, eventually we will start getting a huge amount of fish. Put one large meat or monster meat and three fish into a crock pot, and you, my friend, have the best sanity management food in all of Shipwrecked, Surf and Turf. My dumb self decided to not make a crock pot until much later to show the abundance of food in this DLC, but it cost me lots of sanity, so don't be like me. Anyways, now that you have an alchemy engine up and running, it's time to really get to work. Collect enough wood to create six boards, enough grass to make three ropes, and then with those six boards, three rope, and ten seashells, make yourself an armored boat. This is arguably the best boat in all of Shipwrecked. It has decent health and decent speed. This will be your daily use boat for the rest of this DLC. Now how do we utilize this boat to its fullest? Well, with two cloth, which is crafted with bamboo, two rope, and two bamboo, you can make a cloth sail. This sail will increase your sailing speed tremendously. You can also craft a boat torch with some twigs and a torch. This is a neat way to refresh any torches that you have that are nearly 0%. Tonight also marks a full moon. There are not a lot of special things about a full moon in Shipwrecked. However, waves become more common and giant waves that can't be used as speed boosts will appear. Avoid these large waves as much as possible. Once you feel ready enough, grab your boat repair kit and craft yourself some trawl nets using bamboo and rope. Make at least two, or if you are some kind of rich person, make three to get the best chance. Now I already mocked trawling in the intro to Mild Season. So why am I now telling you to make them? It's boss fight time. While trawling in deep waters, there is a chance that suddenly, Quacken will appear. Now Quacken looks incredibly intimidating. Tentacles everywhere, huge waves splashing, but luckily for you my friend, Quacken has one huge weakness that makes her the weakest boss in all of Don't Starve. All you have to do is use your map to locate the head, make a beeline for the head, and attack it until she disappears. Continue doing this four times and boom, you have officially killed your first boss. Now this boss battle will leave you soaked and your boat damaged from the waves, but using your boat repair kit you can fix that damage easily, and the wetness can be fixed with a small pit stop by a fire. There is a good reason we killed Quacken this fast. Quacken drops probably the best starter kit in the entire game. You will get a Thulsite crown, which is one of the best armor helmets in the game, an obsidian chest plate, which while not incredibly useful is still better than a log suit, a quacken beak, which will come in handy further down the line, a volcano staff, and three other useful randomized drops. Think this is good for such an easy boss kill? Well, quacken also drops a booty bag, an upgraded backpack that has the same storage as a normal backpack, but drops gold doubloons every few days literally just an upgrade. You may notice that I'm wearing a particularly drippy hat. Well, you should too. Using some of that snakeskin you got from your skirmishes with snakes on the islands, if you had skirmishes with them, 
If not, go beat some snakes up. You can make a snakeskin hat. This hat does not provide 100% wetness protection, which is why I did not mention building it before the Quacken fight. You will become soaked during that fight regardless, but it provides something even more important, electric protection. This obviously will become huge during hurricane season, but it's actually helpful here too. Normally when you attack an innocent little jellyfish, you will be met with a painful shock that takes away 5 of your health. Do the same thing while you're wearing a snakeskin hat however, and you can cut down as many jellyfish as you please. This is an amazing food source when cooked, and I actually do encourage you to slay as many of these oceanic puffballs as you can, because you want the sea police, more commonly known as floaty boaty knights, to investigate your shenanigans. These are the shipwrecked equivalent of chess pieces, and much like them they drop gears. They are however way easier to beat. Just get close and hit them repeatedly. This is because they only have a ranged attack. I actually get very, very unlucky and am forced to go gearless for a majority of my entire playthrough. But if you get gears, just remember to get yourself an icebox and then save the rest for something important later on. Hurricane season is fast approaching, and luckily your snakeskin hat is really all you will need for this all bark, no bite season that's coming up. But there are still a few things we can do to prepare. You see, hurricanes come with a lot of wind, which can not only blow items around, making chests actually useful for more than just organization, but it can put regular fire pits and campfires out. So how do we cook food? Well, head over to a nearby coral reef and get to ruining that biodiversity. Don't worry though, because unlike real life, this coral is not sensitive to your human ways, and will grow back in record time. You're going to want a lot of this stuff because it's very useful. I also decided to relocate some plants to my main island. I did not do this during the Reign of Giants segment because resources are abundant and easy to travel to. In Shipwrecked, however, you can quite literally be an island away from the nearest grass or twigs. So go ahead and dig it up and bring it home if your island does not have enough. If you decide to bring grass to your home island, it will need fertilization after relocation. I personally like to use rot to do this, by now you should have some food that has converted into rot as well. Saplings do not require this luxury however, and will begin producing twigs for you with no help. You may run into a dumb looking bird called a doidoi on your travels. These guys are an interesting thing. Only two of them will ever spawn on your world, and always will spawn on separate islands. If you manage to find both and kidnap them to bring them to an island together, you can repopulate this near extinct species. A fun side quest, but one that's not crazy useful. Their feathers can make some interesting tools, but nothing game changing in my opinion. Anyways, it's time for silk. We're going to use the same method as Reign of Giants with traps, and in fact, this method is more crucial for shipwrecks, as spider warriors are venomous in this DLC. Now you may be thinking, whoa, venomous? Yes, venom and poison is a new feature introduced in the shipwreck DLC, and it can be transferred to you in a myriad of ways, spider warriors being one of them. Becoming envenomated or poisoned will cause you to lose health and sanity over time, and your only options after that are to attempt to wait it out although that could be very lethal, or use a venom sack or anti-venom to cure your ailment, although the former will cause you to lose significant amounts of health, specifically 75. It's best to avoid this ailment altogether if you can, so never, and I mean ever, hit a spider near its nest. Now, using a shovel, head to those sand piles you probably found while island hopping. Use that shovel to scoop yourself up some sand, after this, all you need to get is bamboo. I promise, your scavenger hunt is almost over. Using that silk, some rope, and those coconuts you hopefully collected early on, we are going to make ourselves the most overpowered food structure in Shipwrecked, the fish farm. Now you may notice it looks empty when you first make it, 
Well, to populate it, you may have noticed that cormorants, which are the black birds that are sometimes found in the ocean, will drop row. Using that row, we can populate a fish farm. Now we have an almost infinite source of fish. And to make it even better, you have a chance to get three special fish that provide interesting buffs when consumed. The Period Fish, which increases speed, the Neon Quattro, which cools you down, and the Purple Grouper, which not only makes you immune to wetness, but prevents your boat from taking damage from waves. This particular fish makes killing Quacken absurdly easy, but there's a benefit to getting fish farms that have all three of these fish. Combine all three types in a crock pot with random fruit or vegetable, and you will get, and please don't yell at me if I say this wrong because I, I don't know how to say it perfectly, Tropical Boulabays, a hard to pronounce dish that gives you all three buffs for an extended period of time. When harvesting your fish farm, be sure not to harvest the last one, as this will depopulate the farm. The way I like to do it is wait for a small silhouette shark to be circling above your fish. This means you can safely take three fish out without depopulating the farm. Another structure that you can now build that is a hurricane staple is a chiminea. This fire works exactly like a normal fire with just slightly less light output, but it is immune to wind. Hurricane season is now knocking on the door. Today and tomorrow are resource gathering days. Focus on coconuts, palm leaves, grass, twigs, and bamboo, all of which will be important very soon. It's now time to make some more hurricane staples. Using some bamboo, palm leaves, and rope, craft yourself a palm leaf hut. This small shelter is actually incredibly useful for drying off, as it provides 100% wetness protection. Place it near your fire for maximum effect. Next up is a lightning rod. This is arguably the most important structure you will make. The biggest danger of hurricane season is lightning. So a lightning rod makes that danger null. With our snakeskin hat, we will be able to ignore lightning damage. It does not, however, stop fires. This is where the lightning rod quite literally shines. Hurricane season starts tomorrow, and we are more than prepared. However, there's something that you are going to want to work on now. Using coconuts, limestone, and bamboo, craft yourself a tar extractor. Then head to a nearby tar slick. You should hopefully have found one on your journeys. They are actually relatively common. Plant that bad boy and now wait for the tar to come rolling in. Tar is an excellent fuel source and an important resource as it makes arguably the best structure in this DLC, the boat yard. We're gonna focus more on this beast of a structure in the hurricane segment, but you should certainly focus on this structure now. Why? because it literally heals your boat for virtually free. No pesky boat repair kits, just some tar and some time. By now your boat definitely probably could use the repair. Mine sure could. The strong winds of hurricane season have blown not only mild season away, but also this video. If you enjoyed this video or it helped you get a great start on your shipwrecked journey, then leaving a like, Commenting down below, and subscribing if you are not, would be a great help. And don't worry, because much like my Reign of Giants series, I am putting my full effort into completing this series as fast as possible. Expect the Hurricane Season video to be out by next Friday. Or if you are from the future where Friday has already happened, this video will be on screen now, alongside the stream that this footage is from. This has been Polar Lotus, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.